back everyone and today I have another scrapbooking process video for you and as you can see it's a double page layout. Most of the time when I want to tell a story and I know that I'm going to be using more than one photo I tend to go towards my as a studio guide. It just helps me with inspiration to see how I want to lay out my photos and cut them out just differently than having them you know for potatoes or square or whatever. So in this case, I'm using the Duo Maldives uh, Studio. It's the only one I have, but I do intend to buy some more. But you know, with the one, with the the one set of stencils, which is two stencils, you can create like up to twenty different layouts or even more layouts. It's it's really up to your own creativity. And basically all you do is you just put your photos down underneath it and you sort of see where you can cut around and you can come up with all these different shapes. In this case I went with some sort of wavy shape, you know, waves, water, sort of that type of theme. And on this first layout or this first page I use five photos. So once you do your markings you can then go ahead and just cut it all out. I used, in this case I used just my blade first which... Normally I use a pen and I think I do move on to the pen because it's just easier to see where you want to cut. And yeah, away you go. You just put it down with some washi tape or painter's tape, something that's not going to tear your photo away. And follow the guidelines, make sure that you're not going to cut through anything that you want to see. And that's really basically all there is to it. So this is where I switch to the pen and use the pen. I draw my guideline and just get the scissors and cut it out. And then I do the same for the little ones down the bottom, just try to find out where I'm going to put my, you know, just follow the guides. You can do endless, as I said earlier, endless shapes or different guidelines just by following all those little different squares. You put them under different little areas, you get a completely different look. So what I'm going to do, otherwise this video is going to get too boring, I'm going to cut to the next stage. As you can see, my photos now have a lovely little curve to them or a little wave following the water theme. And I've just used my HEG gun to adhere them to some scrap white card stuff that I had lying around. And all I'm going to do now is basically give them a small white mat. And I wanted to sort of follow the same guideline as before, but instead of winging it freehand, I'm going to use that stencil so that I can draw in the lines exactly the same as the photo was cut and that way it just gives me a nice even mat. So the reason why I wanted to document a number of photos and not just one is because I wanted to tell the story of my son's swimming lessons. Swimming lessons are a big part of our life. It was once a week and he has been going to swimming lessons since he was nine months old. So you know it's it's a big part of our lives and I wanted to document how far he has gone from when he was a baby till he is now. I wanted to tell the story of his teacher, which is in the photos that he's had since he was nine months old. And in these photos, he was trying to get his certificate for the Royal Life Saving, I don't know, accreditation or whatever it is. And it's not about him saving lives. It's about him saving his own life should he fall into some water somewhere. So on this day, I took lots of photos and they're all at different stages of the swimming lesson and I absolutely love how this layout turned out and it really does tell the story. On the second page, I do some journaling and yeah, I've now got it all documented. My photos are now all matted and I am adhering it to some dark blue cardstock that I had in my stash and I thought that that really picked up on the blue of his cap because... When I look at these photos, all that stands out is his blue cap. And he's had that blue cap for quite a while. So it was part of our swimming routine. So I thought I would play on that, on those colours. Off camera, I did spend a considerable amount of time looking for embellishments to go with this layout and also some paper. And I came up with zilch, nada, nothing. Off camera, I did spend a considerable amount of time looking for the right embellishments and also the right paper and I came up with zilch, another nothing. So what do you do? You make your own. So as you saw earlier, I did get a piece of white cardstock and I used some clear gesso on it and I actually did that to two pieces of white cardstock. 
and I'm now working on the photos for the second page. So, as you've seen the process before, I'm just going to cut to the end of all this. Voila! My photos are now all matted and stuck to the background of some dark blue cardstock. And I'm now using some Gazercraft mini alpha stickers just to write my son's swimming teacher's name and I'll stick it to the side just so that, you know, if he's ever looking through the album when he's 21 or something, he says, who is that? Her name is there. From my huge supply of stash that I'm trying to get through, I found these word stickers. And that one that I pulled out and I'm sticking down there just says swim lessons, which, as we all know, that's exactly what's happening here. And then I used this other one and it says poolside. That's the one that says poolside. The other one uh, said dive and he was diving in the photo and the other one says swim fun. So there you go. That's what they all say since you can't see it. And I was happy to make a dent on those leather stickers that I've had for a while. My card stocks have now dried and it's to the old packaging technique. So I wanted obviously a blue background, uh, the theme being water, and I started off with my Distress Oxides. The first colour that I'm using is the Blueprint Sketch. The packaging technique, for those that don't know, you just get your ink, you put it on some packaging, some old plastic, and add a bit of water and smoosh it on down. So since I was doing two pages, I worked on one, and then while that one was drying, I worked on the second one. So now, I, the second colour that I used is Salty Ocean. And I did exactly the same technique. And by putting that one on top of another, you get some lovely little patterns and variations in colour. I'm now onto my third colour and that is Broken China. And yes, I am cutting out quite a bit of it because the process is just the same and I thought you would get bored just watching me do the same repetitive movements over and over again. The last two colours I used were Faded Jeans and Peacock Feathers. I wanted a hint of a border so I got out my Distress Crayons and I'm just using the, or the black one, I can't remember its real name. Oh, black soot or soot. And I just dragged the line across the top there and then just with a wet paintbrush, I'm just letting it drip a little bit. So it just gives a faint outline of black and gives it a nice little rusty border. I do like how the background turned out in the end and I must admit, I do enjoy doing a lot of messy mix media. And I'm so sorry I'm out of focus here, but all I'm doing is using an a stencil and I'm putting some metallic blue paint through it. On my silhouette machine I just wrote out the word swimming lessons and I actually cut them out three times and then laid one on top of the other so I would have some dimension and then I found this lovely cut file of mermaid scales and I just thought oh yeah that'll do they look a bit like waves and I cut a whole page out and I'm now just trimming it so it fits on the top half of the layout and the bottom half. You see, sometimes it's okay not to have all the fancy die cuts and all the ephemera and all that. In this case, I had nothing and I made my own and I'm really happy with the way it all turned out. Yes, it did take a bit longer and I had to use my creative brain a little bit more, but it was all worth it. So I didn't like the fact that my die cut was stark white. It just stood out too much. And what I did was I found these Nuvo embellishment mousse and I put it into my little tray there, added a bit of water, and I'm just using it as a light paint. And it comes out really, really nice. Well, I like it anyway. Someone else might not like it, but I'm happy and it's my layout. And that's all what scrapbooking is about. Sometimes I think we judge ourselves a little bit too harshly and think, oh, my layout doesn't look like so-and-so's. And you know what? It doesn't have to. It's your memories and you document them the way you like. The bubble die cut on the right-hand side that you can see there, that is actually not from my stash. It is from a die cut swap that I participated in recently. And if you want to join us for any future swap, swaps, not swaps, the Facebook group page that I joined was Auntie Vera Scraps Facebook page and they're a group of such lovely ladies and I must admit I absolutely enjoyed the 
die cut swap that we participated in just recently. So Vera, thank you so much for my die cuts. I love them all. So I'm just showing you how I made the the paint from that new low mousse embellishment here because I didn't record the earlier one. And I'm just going to use this one to add a bit of colour to my, uh, what are they? They're wood veneers, wood veneer words. I don't know. One of them says love this and the other one says true stories that I stick onto my pages. And from my stash I found these little sequences. They look like little consecutive circles or little waves, whatever they are. I'm just sticking them on the page there following the curve of the photos. And yes, this layout is almost complete. This is the second page and I've done my journaling and this lovely dirtle dirtle turtle die cut is also from that uh, die cuts die cuts well my gosh I can't talk today and it's a lovely turtle so once again thanks Vera and if you want to join us for future swaps just head on to the Auntie Vera Scraps Facebook page oh my gosh I forgot that I used these uh, clear word stickers they're just ones from the regic store and they read one reads amazing and the other one reads wonderful and at the top there, from the same pack of die cuts from the Regic store, it just says, today is your day. And I just put that in because he did get his Royal Life Saving Certificate. And of course, I have to ink the edges of that die cut because that's just what I do. So we've come to the end of my video and I want to say to everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, I really would appreciate if you hit that button. And till next time, I wish you all the happiness in the world to each and every one of you. Bye now.